Hey, how's it going guys? So it's been a while since my last video, so I decided why not just jump on, play around with things, and let's work with some animations today, because animations are fun. So I'm going to be using SwiftUI. SwiftUI is what I work with a lot, and also there's a lot of cool changes to it, and I think it's fun. Like if you haven't given SwiftUI a chance, please do. It's really fun actually. So let's go ahead, let's not clone, let's go ahead and create a new Xcode project. That's what we want to do. Create a new Xcode project here. Then with the product name, I'm just going to be animation fun, yo. And then we go to the interface. It's going to be Swift UI, lifecycle, Swift UI app, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Create. All right. So now that we are here, let's start playing around with some things. But yeah, basically what I wanted to do was create an animation where if I click a button, it'll do like a pop-up view kind of thing. And then we can add some animations to any of those things. Um, and so this will just give us a good foundation of how we can use animations inside of our application. And before you guys get angry at me, let me make this text bigger. So in order to get started, let's go ahead and first create a button here. So I'm going to say button, open parentheses, and we're going to click action and labels because we want to create our own action here. So first generic, you know, it just kind of says button. So let's go ahead and add an image to this. So if you guys don't know about SF symbols, um, they're the native symbols that you can use inside of applications. It's right over here, FSF symbols, and you can download the application. And I'm going to add a plus button. So if you look up plus, it'll give you a bunch of options. And I'm going to go for the plus.circle.fill here. So with this image, we're going to say image with the system name of plus.circle.fill. Then we want to make it resizable. And then we set the frame. So we're going to set the frame to 60 by 60 with the alignment of center. And so this is going to be our basic starting point. So when I click on this button, I want something to happen. So what I want to happen now, I'm just going to say funk animation. And then inside of this animation, we'll make stuff happen. Now animating things really happens when you change a value. So you will say like when this button is clicked and when it is unclicked, something happens. And so first off, let's go ahead and say uh, let's create a variable up here or a state variable. We say state private var, and then we say is clicked. And we say bool will be equal to, and we'll say false to start with. So when we click on this button, we want to go ahead and say self dot is clicked dot toggle. So that'll turn it from true to false to false to true and so on. Now we need to connect this action that we just created with our button. So we're going to go up here where we have the brackets and we're saying self.animation. So now anytime we click on this button here, it'll call this animation. Now what do we want to actually animate? So first off, let's just mess around with some things. Let's go ahead and mess with the rotation effect. So I'm going to say rotation effect and the angle will be equal to dot degrees and we'll put it as 90 degrees. Now, as you can see, like this degrees here is being applied immediately. So if we were to make it like degrees 40, you can see that that's, a, that's being applied right now. But if we want to change it, the way that we do this is through our Boolean variable. So we go ahead and say is clicked. And then we need to set a default value and when this value is true. So our default value, we want it to be zero. So we'll say degrees will be equal to zero. Otherwise, this is right after this question mark here. So for this first one, we say dot degrees will be equal to 90. And then we have the fallback and that comes after the quotation. So sorry if that seemed a little bit confusing. Let me see, just drag this out real quick. So basically we say is clicked. If is clicked is equal to true, it'll call this. Otherwise, that's what you can think that that, that colon is. It's like otherwise we fall back and do this. And so now if we were to build and run this, you should be able to see like it actually is working, but it's not really animating, right? So how do we make it animate? Well, we say dot animation and we make it, yeah, sure, let's play play with ease in right now. So when we click on it, you can see that it starts animating. One of the effects that I really like is dot spring because when you do it, it's kind of like this nice little bouncy effect to a certain extent. I like it. And just to make it a little bit neater, I usually like to have these dots kind of spaced out afterwise. So we have like the image and then we kind of like have the dots afterwards. I don't know, kind of looks nicer to me. And also something to note with animations is they're like cancelable in the middle of the animation at any given point. 
and so you can see that like the plus button doesn't go all the way it kind of stops in the middle and goes right back that's one of the beauties of swift ui okay so now let's start messing with another uh, view here so let's go ahead and create another view let's say color dot black so currently this is breaking things so actually you want to put all of this inside of a z stack of course and just tidy that up and there you go so now we have a z stack there's our color black let's go ahead and frame this up so i'm going to say dot frame will be equal to 100 uh, yeah let's do that for now i'll just kind of show you how to animate something else based on a button being clicked now one of the things that i want to animate is the position so i'm going to say offset and then we can mess with the offset y and x so that's going to be here and so I want it to be just right off the screen. And when we click on it, it's going to pop up. And so let's go ahead and do that where we actually grab the size of the screen. So in order to do this, we're going to say dot up here, the geometry reader, open parentheses, and then we say geometry in. And that allows us to kind of get the size of the screen and to work with the size of the screen. And so now we can work with that. So for the offset here, I kind of want it to be all the way at the bottom. So one of the things you can see is like that geometry reader kind of messed with like the sizing of our regular views. So in order to fix this, just go right into your Z stack and we say dot frame. And then we're going to set our width and height equal to our geometry dot size dot width. And then our geometry dot size dot height. And like so, now we have it perfectly placed. Now we can start using it the same way. So we can just get the geometry size dot height, and then we, that's going to be the X axis, I guess. So actually let's keep our X at zero. And then for our Y value, we're gonna say geometry dot size dot height. And then it looks like we might need to do like divided by two or something. And there you kind of have it. Okay. Now what I want to happen is just for this stuff to be like right off the screen. So I'm going to say plus 100 or so. And then when we click on this plus button, it's going to make that view pop up. So let's tidy this up a tiny bit more. Okay, here we go. So now I want it to pop up. So in order for that to happen, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the Y value. We're going to say is clicked and we'll make that the default value here if it's not clicked and then we're going to ch just copy and paste that right beforehand and we'll make this like minus 100 instead of plus 100 and so now when we do click this it pops up right here okay perfect so now of course we want it to have an animation so let's say dot animation will be equal to dot spring now if we click that we get this nice little pop-up Sweet, right? And there you have it. So now another thing that I just want to do real quick, because I think it would look cool, is let's make it so for the system name here, let's change the image when we click this. So I'm going to say is clicked like so. So let's go ahead and find a different image when it is clicked. And so let's go to our SF symbols here and let's say like back go backward that one looks pretty nice to me so let's go ahead and take that and we can say go backward and so now when it is clicked it should actually change that image as well so now we click on it and it kind of has that funky little animation going on so it kind of changes the aspect ratio so I'm wanting to say aspect ratio mode will be equal to dot fit and maybe that'll clean up the animation a tiny bit a little bit it's kind of interesting again not the greatest animation but you kind of get the general idea now another thing that I want to do is let's go ahead and make the offset for this button kind of interesting as well so let's say the offset X and Y value are going to be minus 100 let's take this and just plunk that right into our Y value here and now when it is clicked we can move it up so this is going to be our fallback 
and this is going to be our clicked value. So we can go ahead and say minus 200 on this one. Okay, so now when it is clicked, it should also move up with our view, and that'll give a, kind of give us a cool animation. Hello, hello Mr. Button. And here we find ourselves today just waiting for the iPhone 11 Pro Simulator to load. This is just a normal day as a developer. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so I have an idea of what could possibly be going on here, is we're moving the rotation effect in the offset of the image and not of the actual button itself. So what if I were to change that and remove that from here? I have a feeling that's kind of what's going on here. So let's go ahead and build and run that real quick. And yep, that seems to have fixed it. Perfect, okay. So keep that in mind that you want to edit the parameters of the actual thing that you want to change. Not just the image inside of it, but also the button on the outside of it. So, boom, noted. Uh, I'm telling that to myself. So let's mess with the offset and whatnot of our actual button here. So I'm going to take off the divided by two here. And now when we click on that, we kind of have that nice little pop-up. It's pretty neat, huh? And so another thing that I want to play around with um, that I haven't really played around with much is a, a 3D rotation. So right now we've just been doing everything on a 2D axis, but now let's go ahead and work with things on a 3D axis, right? So uh, one thing you have to note is this has to be done above anywhere that we mess with the offset. And I'll show you why in just a minute. But we go ahead and say rotation 3D effect here. And then for this one, we can say dot degrees, and we can mess around with that. Um, let's actually go ahead and take what we did earlier with the degrees. We say it is clicked, we'll say the degrees is 90. And then for the other one, uh, we'll make it zero. So actually for this, instead of saying it's 90, let's go ahead and put it at 180. That way it just kind of flips around. And then we want it to rot rotate around the y-axis. That looks pretty good to me. And then for some reason, Xco 12 adds a little comma, so we need to go ahead and add, delete that. But there you have it. So now we should have that looking good. But now when I click on this button, we should actually have the color kind of flipping around the y-axis. And so let's give that a shot. And you kind of get that nice little effect there. Um, let's actually mess with the offset a little bit so that we can see the entire thing. Okay, so now we can get a full view of how that looks. So now when we click on it, you kind of get this neat little 3D rotation. Now this is going around the Y axis, but of course if you want to make it go around the X axis or both, you can just say 1.0 or Y 1.0, and you kind of get a neat little flip there. Or around the Z axis, let's try that out as well. Now, as you can see, that kind of messed with the way it looked. But either way, you can have fun in messing around with that, how everything looks. Um, if we were to actually make the z-axis look a little bit better, maybe we can go to 100, or sorry, <laughs> for the z-axis, we put that at, at that. And then for the 180, put that at 360 degrees. And so now we just get it flipping around completely. And it's just this absolute mess but it's fun you know it's cool <laughs> and of course another thing that you should always keep in mind is you can change up these animations as much as you want so right now we're using dot spring for everything but they have a ton of options like you can change up the duration of ease in and ease in out or you can even do the interpolating spring uh, like we've been doing here but you can also change the parameters of that spring so if you want there to be more force, more damping, or something like that, you can do that as well. Or if you want it to just be linear, a very simple, basic thing, with like, at say it's like one second, it's just going to look like that. Nothing cool, but it looks nice. But there you have it. That was just a quick little add-on that I wanted to do in this, but that's how you do animations. Pretty simple, pretty quick and a lot of fun. But there you go guys, um, that was just really me kind of getting used to filming again and trying things out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed me just messing around with uh, animations and getting things working. Um, I know it doesn't look great, but you know, you kind of get an idea of how things, how animations work and how we can use them in our own applications in SwiftUI. So thanks for watching, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Subscribe for more and I'll see you later. Bye.